And here's my 400 watt solar power generator. I found some great resources from other people that have built them in the past, but I modeled the size after a build that I put in my camper van, which gave me plenty of power. And so I used a lot of the same components since they, you know, worked really well in the past. Got the 12 volt on the front, a nice uh, little display in addition to the USB ports that shows me the voltage my inverter switch that powers the inverter and some switches for the fan 12 volt DC fan and a couple others that I can plug other appliances into uh, my AC port has got a nice weatherproof cover to keep the rain out on the side I've got a inlet that lets a lot of air get sucked in I just put one fan on the back which draws a lot of air over the inverter to keep it nice and cool from overheating this back section is kind of the power input side. So here we've got the SAE plug for the solar panels and a place to plug in an extension cord to charge the battery off of the 5.5 volt trickle charger. Let's go ahead and take a look on the inside here. I wanted a really clean look so I mounted the components on this piece of wood. I've got my 12 volt DC LED light here, telescopes as well as it's always on. I just hit the switch. I um, also mounted the solar charge controller display. It shows me all the information on the battery, how much current is being drawn from the solar panels, as well as how much current's being drawn in from the trickle charger when I plug it in to charge it. And it's been handling pretty well. I'm going to do some tests, but from what I can tell, it hasn't dropped down under 80% for the last two days. And I've been running my DC fridge off of this. So I'm, I'm calculating about a week without really even charging it, just running this fridge, um, which I keep fully stocked, as you can tell, in my man cave, which technically isn't a man cave. It's a garage, which you know is a man cave for men that have experience and skills with tools but my favorite part is being able to mount all the components on the bottom side keeping all the wires out of the way and it actually mounts really well on the top lid which made it really easy to mount all my components the centerpiece on the lid is my solar charge controller that has a 50 amp breaker that goes to the fuse block as well as a 175 amp uh, fuse on the battery and it's bolted down really well uh, and goes all the way through the bottom so if it ever falls out um, out of the truck it would you know not damage any of the components inside and I've got everything taped up to cover any exposed points um, so that if anything should get exposed it won't short circuit I've got a 200 amp breaker here that actually doubles as a kill switch I can hit that or if any of the points get exposed um, it'll pop the breaker before it damages any of the components but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on for now um, the inverter that I went with was a 2000 watt pure sign inverter um, in my van that I built I had a 1500 watt which powered all my appliances juicers blenders vacuums um, anything that I needed but I wanted to be able to have this power a lot of the home appliances refrigerators AC television things like that that so I went for the bigger one and been having really get great results with it everything's got a weatherproof uh, caulking on the inside and outside protecting all the components inside the box I've got my uh, trickle charger battery maintainer um, I've plugged it in overnight and it's actually charged the battery which is a hundred amp hour battery which is 1280 watt hours in my van build, I also had 100 amp hours capacity, but it was in two sealed lead acid AGM batteries. Um, so for this build, I went with the lithium, which is a lot lighter and a lot more stable if it's going to be moved around a lot. So let me know what you think. Um, I think these components worked out really well together. Let me know what you do differently. If you have any questions, shoot them in the comments. Thanks for watching my video.